been chosen. Okay, folks, came across this article, Who is Behind 17? Linguistic Detectives Find Fingerprints. So I do this video partly in response to Baby Fist, uh, whose notes said the article is wrong. Uh, Ron is not 17. I just spent this week with him. You can find this discussion and more in the official Spirit of the Meadows channel telegram. The link will be pinned and in the description. If you don't know, Ron Rockins was a programmer who ran the 8-coon board and who verified a trip code for the letter designated by the number 17. We have an article here that goes on to describe how this research firm called Orf Analytics analyzed the 17 writings, compared it to the writings of an individual named Mr. Ferber and Ron Rockins to determine allegedly that they are the individuals most likely responsible for all of the 17 posts that we had seen from 2017 to 2020. The most disappointing aspect of the article is there's no specific links in it to the actual research publication where we can look at their methods to determine if there were any weaknesses in the study. There are a few good link outs to other resources. One goes to this April 14, 2018 NBC News article. I'll scroll to a key paragraph in this article and read it to you. Okay, so in discussing the origin of 17, I hope to be able to use other resources to build on the paragraphs I'm going to read to you. In 2016, the FBI and on a self-described high-level analyst and strategist offering intel about the 2016 investigation to the Clinton Foundation, then came HLI and on an acronym for high-level insider who posted about various dubious conspiracies and riddles, including one that claimed Princess Diana and stuff I can't talk about. Then CIA and on in CIA intern took the boards in early 2017 and last August one called White House Insider offered a supposed preview that something that was going to go down regarding the DNC and some leakage. 17 was just another unremarkable part of the genre until November 2017 when two moderators of the 4chan board were 17 posted predictions who went by the names Pamphlet and Bruch Describe reached out to a Tracy Diaz. Bruch Describe is a web programmer from South Africa named Paul Ferber. This person's quoted, A bunch of us decided that the message needed to go wider, so we contacted YouTubers who have been commenting on the 17 drops. So they went to certain YouTubers. Diaz says in a blog that in early days, she banned together with two moderators. The plan was to promote 17, which would mean bigger YouTube followings for them. Diaz did some video that has this title. The original video is not present any longer. Here is a more current re-upload on this channel. So you can analyze this video and determine if the whole thing was contrived. So then allegedly DS falls with dozens more of these videos, each containing a call for viewers to donate through her Patreon and PayPal account. Her channel now boasts more than 90k subs. I guess that's not true because I can't find the original video anymore. Maybe she privated it. Okay, now article just kind of goes on to describe how Seventeen moved to Reddit and how she was allegedly at the helm, etc. Another one of the link outs was to this podcast. I clipped out a few things that I may upload to Rumble. You know, I just, I know YouTube's kind of crazy. The moderators are not completely rational, so can't uh, post clips for speculation. But I will say overall, this particular podcast is uh, very heavily biased in this episode. It's an interview with the creator of 8chan, Frederick Brennan. I'll just tell you the most salient point is the alleged discussion between 17 and Ron Watkins at the particular moments in time, January 6, 2018. And that point in time a year later when the 8-coon board was created after 8chan collapsed. There's a lot of unverifiable exposition about how a relationship which was established between Ron and 17 January 2018 was continued in such a way Frederick was concerned it was a LARP interaction between Ron and himself. There's no smoking gun evidence for this particular assertion. This CNN interview is the main motivation for me to actually do this video. I'm going to go ahead and play this clip to you and I'll just tell you what I think of it. Well, thinking back on it, like uh, it's basically it was basically three years of intelligence training teaching normies how to do intelligence work. It's basically what I was doing anonymously before, but never as Q. See that smile? Ron had slipped up. He knew it, and I knew it. And after three tireless years of cat and mouse, well... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this clip hit me different this time. I had seen this clip before, but let's go ahead and call out the, the balls and strikes here. So the major weakness of the clip is the presumptuousness 
of this HBO director who's doing the interview, Colin Holbach. So the problem is the guy is very biased and he really overemphasizes and enhances that moment of the catch and then later has his exaggerated, I got you laugh. These features, because they're so biased, they turn off the majority of those who had followed 17 or, or otherwise Patriots. I think what would have been stronger is if this particular clip was played without interjection by uh, Polbach and without this nonsense. See that smile? Ron had slipped up. He knew it and I knew it. See, this does not go over very well. This is good for a purely liberal audience, but it's not going to capture the majority of the people. So looking past this editorialization, I believe the HBO director actually has a pretty good point. Okay, let's, let's And after the three, top. it sounded like he was leading it. Yeah, so thinking back on it, like uh, it's basically, it was basically three years of intelligence training, teaching normies how to do intelligence work. It's basically what I was doing anonymously before, but never as Q. Okay, there you go. So he describes the three years of posting from November 2017 to December 2020 as three years of intelligence work educating normies that he, Ron, was doing this previously, but prior to November 2017 when he was doing it, he wasn't doing it as Q, who had not yet existed at that time, implying that over the three years he was doing it as Q. Okay, then we drag through the editorial garbage. Honestly, before, but never as Q. So a pause and then a smile. And then you ask, why suddenly smile like that? The vast majority looking at body language would interpret that as a whoops. See that smile? Ron had slipped up. He knew it and I knew it. So, so then the, uh, the HBO director, he goes into this exaggerated laugh, which is his way of saying the jig is up, Ron. Then Ron laughs with him. An innocent person would realize immediately why he's going into this exaggerated laugh. The countenance will change, become more serious, and something to the effect of, no, that's not what I mean, will come out. When a person is innocent, especially for something that's a very big deal, the repudiation of the counterclaim, the denial, is very stringent and and more forceful. Let's continue. <laughs> it's exaggerated. Oh, no, never, never is Q, I promise. <laughs> okay, and this part was key for me to crack through my own belief barriers here. So just note how weak Ron sounds here. Just pay attention to this part. Never is Q, I promise. <laughs> never is Q, I promise. <laughs> never is Q. Never. Okay. Let's do that again. Never, never is Q, I promise. <laughs> he looks away. Never is Q. So he can't face, he can't stay focused and centered and strongly repudiate. He has to look away and he says it in this kind of weak voice. Because okay. <laughs> I am not Q. Because I am not Q. And then note what happens when he says that. Because <laughs> I am not Q. <clears throat> Immediately uh, clears the throat. What's up with that? The heart rate's increased. There may be some flushing. Tension may be felt in the chest and the throat, the body language of an individual, hoping to recover the moment, but the body has to cooperate. Another <laughs> smile. Another look away. I never was. I never was. So he doesn't look at the camera again. He looks away and says, I never was. So if Ron is just trolling with his body language or if he was caught in a lie, look, I'm just going to tell it to you as I see it here. This is, this is a guilty presentation. If he was trying to distance himself from that specific accusation, he did not do a excellent job in this portion of the interview. In the past, I've spoken with individuals who have claimed to me that there are many who are able to post, and that's it is a sophisticated pay-for-play type of scheme. Another insider tells me he knows who's who and has all the trip codes and everything. So again, this article means almost nothing without appropriate citation. One of the link outs to certain people who are involved early on, an NBC piece was interesting. The podcast is a bit difficult to stomach, but I'll just say that I just don't completely write off Frederick. If he is deceptive, he is at least practiced, and it seems to convey some of the background info concerning the Watkins. And this is just damning. It's not conclusive, but it's uh, it just has me wondering. Also has me interested in following up with Babyfist to learn of his 
week with Ron and what he learned. I'll go ahead and conclude here. Peace.